This is all about multiplying and dividing integers, lesson 18c and 18b and 18a are linked in this description with other helpful videos, all right? We multiply and divide integers the same way we multiply and divide whole numbers. To know if the product or quotient will be negative or positive, we follow this rule. When we have like signs, we're going to have a positive answer. It doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. If they're like signs, it's going to be a positive answer. See? Remember, parentheses means multiplying. Remember, fractions are little division problems, aren't they? So this is 12 divided by 3. That's going to give us a positive 4. And if they're both negative, that's going to give us a positive because they're like signs. When we have two unlike signs, we're going to have a negative answer. Well, now we have a positive and a negative. They're unlike, so it's going to be a negative answer. So this is for multiplication. Now we have a negative and a positive. It's still going to be negative because we have unlike signs. When we're doing division and they're unlike signs, we're going to have a negative. And it doesn't matter which one is the numerator and which one's the denominator. If one of them is negative, they're unlike, and the answer is going to be negative. All right? So let me show you some more. Here's some like signs so that we're going to have a positive answer. We have positive 6 and positive 5 multiplied together. We're going to have a positive 30. And if we have a negative 6 and a negative 5, those are like. So we're going to have a positive 30 still. See? They're both like. And in division. They're both positive, so the answer is positive. They're both negative, so the answer is positive. They're like signs. We're going to have a positive answer. Now we have two unlike signs. We're going to get a negative answer. So here we have a positive 6 and a negative 5. It's a negative 30. Or a negative 6 and a positive 5. It's still a negative 30 because they don't have the same sign. And in division, we're going to get a negative answer regardless of which one is positive or negative as the numerator or denominator. They have different signs, so the answer is going to be a negative. Now, if there's an even amount of negative numbers, the product will be positive. Because remember, when you have like signs, they make a positive. So this negative 2 and this negative 3 are pairing up together to make a positive 6. Now we have 6 times positive 6 times 2. So that's going to be a positive 72. When there's an odd amount of negative numbers, the product is going to be negative because what's happening is these two are pairing up to make a positive and leaving him all by himself. So now we have 5 times a positive 6 times a negative 2. That's positive 30 times a negative 2. That means they're unlike, so we have a negative. See? We have an odd amount of negatives. We have a negative answer. We have three negatives multiplied together. We're going to have a negative answer. This makes a positive 4 pairing up together times a negative 3. And that's different signs, a positive 4 and a negative 3. So we're going to have, unlike signs, a negative answer. When we have an even amount of negatives, we get a positive answer because these two pair up to make a positive 4, and these two pair up to make a positive 12. So now we have 4 times 12. That's 48. It's positive. See? Isn't that weird how that happens? Now, I don't want you to confuse the rules for multiplying and dividing integers for adding and subtracting them. We did that in the last video, 18b. You can click on this video's description to learn about adding and subtracting them if you missed it. All right? It was like and unlike signs. Very different rules. And remember that any positive or negative integer that's multiplied by 0 is going to equal 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0, isn't it? doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's going to be a 0, all right? Here's something else that's really important I want to show you. You're going to see a negative sign, a minus sign, in front of parentheses of a negative number. And what this is actually telling us is to distribute this negative to inside the parentheses. There's an invisible 1 in between that negative sign and that parentheses. You have to imagine there's an invisible 1 there. Then you can distribute the negative 1 to the negative 5. Two negatives make a positive. So that's positive 5. See? It's pretty much like we're doing negative 1 times negative 5 because we're distributing it into the parentheses. I have a video, grade 7 math video 6.2b, that goes into this a little bit higher level, 
and it even has some variables in there and we'll talk about the distributive property all right so here's a word problem. The temperature dropped four degrees every day for three days. What was the change in temperature? So in order to recognize the equation, we need to see that this says dropped four degrees. So that's minus four, isn't it? And if it did it for three days, we have a negative four times a positive three. What was the change in temperature? Negative 12. Okay. Now, Lesson 18 begins our journey into Algebra 1, and we're at 18C. And the GED test preparation books don't fully cover Algebra 1. If you want to see a complete Algebra 1 course, there's a link in the description of this video to go to the Algebra 1 playlist. That gets really into the nitty-gritty of Algebra 1, all right? This playlist is only for the GED, and it kind of skims over the topic. So... If you really, really, really want to learn Algebra 1, you need to see my Algebra 1 playlist, okay? So, our next video is going to be applying the order of operations. It's 18D, and if you need more help, I'm going to have links to Grade 6, Grade 7, Algebra 1, and the previous GED videos in this description, all right? This is the one that talks about that invisible negative 1. But all of these are helpful and talk about multiplying and dividing integers. If you're really, really confused, my advice is to watch every single one of them. By the time you're finished watching these, you'll know it by heart. Okay? That easy. I bet it would take less than an hour of your time and you would have this all memorized if you watched all of those videos. Okay? Or you could watch this one over and over again for an hour. But I don't think that would be that much fun. So... We'll talk about the order of operations and algebraic expressions and equations, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.